Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Would you like even more content? Here's my Patreon. Now onto the stories. Case file number 1107, written by Mouse2001. The Fog, the Light, and the Duck. On the first night of my first job, I was driving home from work at around 1 a.m. My first job was washing dishes for a local restaurant, if anyone cares. Apparently, while I was working, some of the thickest fog I've ever seen settled in. I was driving home in this fog, not even able to see a few feet in front of me, when I pulled up to the four-way intersection that leads to the road my house is on. This particular four-way intersection is marked by a blinking red streetlight. It's also the only light on the entire street. So here I am, driving through the heaviest fog of my life, on my way home from a crazy night at work, with nothing to light the road. I lived in a small country town, so most roads didn't have street lamps, but my worthless headlights, and the blinking red street light off in the distance. As I creep up to the blinking red light, lo and behold, my headlights reveal a single mallard duck standing perfectly still in the middle of the intersection directly under the blinking red street light. At this point, I wasn't sure if I was fatigued or crazy because it was 1am, so I began to wonder if it was real because it was just so weird and was standing perfectly still, so I honked at it. The duck slowly turned its head and stared at me. This was some eerie crap, man. Only me, a duck, heavy fog, and an ominous blinking red light at 1 in the morning, and to make it worse, it was staring at me. Me and the duck were locked in eye contact for a solid minute until I slowly made my turn, the duck's gaze following me as I went, careful not to run him over, and I returned home, not believing what I just saw. To this day, I search for that duck every time I pull up to that intersection, in the hopes that it will get one more look at the mysterious intersection duck of legend. But I never saw him again. Case notes are file 1107. The Fog, the Light, and the Duck. Oh my god, the memories of Howard the Duck are coming back to haunt me. I know the movie is supposed to be a comedy, but that movie terrified me as a kid. I don't remember the exact scene, I just remember Howard the Duck being terrifying. I'd be creeped out too if I was in this scenario, let's be honest. Although I'd be riding my bike, so I'd be more exposed to the duck. There'd be no barrier between the duck and me. <laughs> Even though I can probably say from an outside perspective, it probably just was a duck meandering about and it wasn't evil. But who knows, maybe it was possessed by the devil. Hmm. I wouldn't like that. And the fog does make you wonder. In all these situations where heavy, thick fog is around, creepy stuff happens. Case file number 1108, written by Anonymous. The unbelievable party prank that wasn't a prank. One time, I was throwing a party at my house. Well, at some point, I got pissed at my sister because she was drunk and being belligerent. So I left the house and hung out with some friends who were smoking outside. We ended up leaving and cruising for a couple hours. When I got home, everyone was just looking at me wide-eyed. According to everyone else, when my sister was being a bitch, I went off on her. I started yelling and cussing and eventually stormed into my room, which is connected to the living room where the party is. So apparently, I stormed into my room, slammed the door, and walked in the front door a minute later. I was prepared to go strangle my doppelganger to death, but no one was in the room. Some random details that make this more weird. They all said I was incredibly drunk, but after two or three hours of sober cruising, I was as sober as the Pope when I walked in. They said I was wearing a shirt that I had taken off previously that night because I spilled all over myself when doing a beer bong. I was never able to find the shirt they said I was wearing, but I know exactly which one they are all talking about. The friends I cruise with have no memory of the night at all. I started hallucinating images of people in my room for a few weeks after that night. I jokingly, half-jokingly, think they are images of people in other dimensions. So either 20 of my friends randomly decided to fluck with me and make up this elaborate prank, or I'm from a different dimension. Case notes are file 1108, the unbelievable party prank that wasn't a prank. So there's overlap between all of the world's copies out there. For whatever reason, they sometimes bleed through. The images, sights, sounds, everything can be transmitted over at least our perception of it. Our brains can receive the stimuli from those other worlds sometimes. 
in my view, merely as information that they're decoding. I don't think it's real in the same sense as you and I are within the original universe or like the physical matter we can touch like Dave here. <laughs> in other copies of other universes, Dave is there and the overlap is very close, I think, between these parallel realities. But if I saw another Dave somewhere, if I saw myself on the side of the office with another Dave on top, I think he's not really here. It's just my ability to see it. Now, I haven't seen it. That'd be cool, but not yet. <laughs> I think this is good because it means that the these are more like after images. They can't actually harm us. They're not really there. It's just a bit unsettling. The other possibility is you projected your soul forward, likely from intense emotions like anger and frustration, sort of like shedding the real you for a moment to say what you were really feeling towards your sister. You were just bottling it in before. Case file number 1109, written by Flustered Manatee, the photographer and the psychic old man. I was at an art fair in the arts district of the city I live in. A lot of the artists there use old warehouses as their own art studios. Me and my girlfriend walked to the very top floor of one of these warehouses after checking out almost every studio. No one seemed to care to go up that far in the building. We walk into this big open room with only two people in it. One was a woman in her mid-twenties. She was a photographer with all her pictures and stuff on the wall, and the other was a skinny older guy, probably about 60. My girlfriend and I were looking at the photographer's photos when she whispers to me, It's kind of awkward and creepy up here. We should go. We turn around to leave, and the older guy says to my girlfriend, Here, this is from him, for your birthday soon. He hands her a picture of an old-fashioned bicycle. When of course, that was exactly what she wanted from me for her birthday, which was in about two weeks from that point. My girlfriend is shocked and I asked him how he knew, and he just replies with a shrug. We're then leaving. He then says, Be on the lookout, you know, and points to his glasses. A month later, she got a job offer as an optician. We still talk about it. It was absolutely insane. I don't even believe in psychics or anything. Case notes are file 1109, The Photographer and the Psychic Old Man. So what is a psychic truly? I think it's a person whose brain is able to naturally decode and transmit the information on life's tapestry. Thing is, these instances are random. Even in the case of actual psychics, they can't just summon up the ability at will, or at least I've never heard of accounts of them being able to do so. So that's why if you approach a psychic and ask them, you know, can you predict something for me? Well, they probably can't, because it's they're not really in control of it. They're just more likely to be able to experience these decoding events, you could say, which makes proving it much harder. If you're observing them, it has to be in that exact lucky moment to be on the receiving end of this kind of stupendous ability. Still, not magic, just amazing minds. And now time for the quote of the day. Art does not reproduce what we see. Rather, it makes us see. Paul Klee. It's all about perception, as they say. An artist has the ability to provide his perspective that is normally locked away inside his brain onto a visual format, or it could be written to, in a way for someone else that doesn't have that perspective to appreciate it and understand them a bit more. You know, they say we're separated by an insurmountable distance. No one can truly know someone else because we can't be in their brain, their mind, or know their soul. Technically, because of electromagnetism, we can't even touch each other. Like, if you're touching your finger, you're not really touching the mass, the atoms. There's a force that repels it. But through art, we can know each other better. Kind of beautiful, I'd say. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Kinetic Symphony signing off.